in this class we are going to uh, see when the product of two subgroups will be a subgroup uh, we have already discussed earlier that intersection of two subgroups is always a subgroup union of two subgroup is a subgroup if and only if one is subset of other now the question is when will be product of two subgroups be a subgroup right and the answer to that question lies in today's theorem so given a group g h and k to be subgroups of g this hk will be a subgroup of g if and only if hk is equal to kh now the question is what are the sets hk and kh so the set hk is actually collection of element of h multiplied by element of k remember whenever i say multiplication it doesn't mean a usual one it means a binary operation in the group so it may happen that if we are in the group z then this hk will be actually h plus k and this kh will be k plus h that may happen but what we have to remember is uh, the set hk is a collection of element of h multiplied by i mean the binary operation uh, but i will call it as multiplication here so the element of h multiplied by element of k and kh is actually collection of element of k multiplied by element of h and we will need this uh, two step subgroup test as well which is return now in part 1 we will assume that first of all hk is a subgroup of g and we are going to prove that this hk is equal to kh now since hk and kh both are sets so in order to show hk is equal to kh we are supposed to show they are subsets of each other how do we uh, show two sets a and b are equal by showing a is a subset of b as well as b is a subset of e that is exactly what we will do here so first of all let us say we will prove uh, hk is a subset of h uh, sorry hk is a subset of kh right so what i will do i will take a element of hk and we will try to show that it is a element of kh so i'll say let y belongs to hk be any element but what does it mean y is a member of hk and we already know hk is a subgroup right we can use two step test since hk is a subgroup so therefore if you take any two elements from hk the multiplication ab will also lie in hk and if you take one element a let us say from hk then a inverse will also lie in hk and that is what we have to use y is a member of hk so i'll say but hk is a subgroup of g therefore this y inverse will lie in hk now since y inverse is a member of hk remember how do elements of hk look like element of h multiplied by element of k therefore this y inverse will be actually element of h multiplied by element of k for some h belongs to h and k belongs to k now what we will do we will take inverse from both sides so if you take inverse from both sides so what you'll get this implies y inverse whole inverse will be hk inverse right but what is hk inverse shoe socks property uh, that i didn't mention right so what does the property say the property say ab inverse is always equal to b inverse a inverse this is called as shoe socks property so by using this property this will be equal to k inverse multiplied by h inverse so we need to understand it first so here on this side we have a b inverse and there we have b inverse a inverse 
So the meaning, first of all, A appears here on the left and on the right hand side, B appears first. So uh, this is the important thing to notice, the order of the element changes. So it is AB inverse and on that side it is B inverse, A inverse. So by using that property, uh, that is what we will get. But remember, what is Y inverse inverse in group theory? That is nothing but Y, right? So therefore, our Y will be actually equal to K inverse H inverse. But K inverse is an element of K, right? Since K is a subgroup. Similarly, H inverse will also be an element of H. The reason is uh, H is again a subgroup, right? Uh, so uh, this will actually belongs to what kh so we have started with an element of hk and we have successfully shown that it lies in kh and therefore hk is actually a subset of kh we can call it as one and what is the reason that we should mention here the reasons are h is a subgroup of g and k is a subgroup of G. Due to that, what has happened is uh, here, right? H is in H, therefore H inverse will lie in H. Comes from where? This condition, right? Similarly, for K as well, uh, K is in K, therefore K inverse will also lie in K. Now we have to show other way round. So for other way round, we'll start with the element of KH and we'll prove that it lies in hk so i will say let y belongs to kh be any element but how do element of kh look like element of kh is element of k multiplied by element of h for some k belongs to k and h belongs to h idea remains the same we will take y inverse i mean inverse on both sides so therefore this y inverse will be equal to k h inverse use shoe shocks property this is actually equal to h inverse k inverse but notice that is nothing but my value of y inverse is h inverse k inverse so where does this element actually lie as discussed earlier remember h inverse is in h k inverse is in k so i have an element of h multiplied by an element of k and therefore this element lies in hk but hk is a subgroup of g right so where will the inverse of this element lie this will also lie in hk right since hk is a subgroup of g therefore what will happen if you take an element of hk its inverse will also lie in hk so here y inverse is in hk so its inverse will also lie in hk but what is y inverse inverse that is nothing but y therefore y lies in hk and therefore we can say therefore i have started with the element of kh we have shown that it is in hk therefore kh is a subset of hk you can call it as 2 and therefore hk is equal to kh this is from 1 and 2 uh, that is exactly what we wanted to prove so the main uh, heart of the theorem lies where <coughs> it lies here uh, whenever we are having an element of hk we have to use the fact that uh, hk is a subgroup of g and mainly the second condition of two-step test so if an element is in hk then its inverse will lie in hk that is exactly uh, i have written here and the same thing I have done here as well. So thus what we have shown is if HK is a subgroup of G, then HK 
will be equal to kh now we will show other way round we will assume that hk is equal to kh and we will prove that hk is a subgroup of g